Number seven, suppose identical amounts of heat transfer into different masses of copper and water, causing identical changes in temperature. What is the ratio of the mass of copper to water? All right, so on these type of problems, I like to uh, work first with the question, meaning what is it asking me? It's asking me to find the ratio of the mass of copper to that of water. Okay, so I know basically I need a, a formula or an answer that looks something like this. The mass of copper, Cu, relative to the mass of water, right? Now what they're also saying is that identical amounts of heat transfer and the masses and all this stuff causing changes, causing identical changes in temperature. So I'm thinking, how is heat energy, mass, and temperature related? Oh, right. This formula over here on the right-hand side, the calorimetry equation, right? So now what I can do is I can write this equation out for each. Remember, the heat transferred to or from a particular object, in this case we're talking about copper, will equal then the mass of that copper multiplied by the specific heat of that copper, multiply them by the change in temperature of the copper. Okay, I can also write this equation out for uh, water, that the uh, heat gained or lost by the water, H2O, and I guess the liquid water we're talking about, right? Um, well, actually, water is liquid, right? I mean, it's ice would have been ice. <laughs> so the mass here of then H2O, uh, multiplied then by the specific heat of H2O, and then multiplied by the change in temperature of that H2O, all right? But now notice, basically, within these formulas, here is my mass of copper, and here is my mass of water. So now what I can basically do, solve this equation for the mass of copper, and then solve this equation for the mass of water. Let's do that first, all right? So basically now what we need to do I'm just going to move this down. All we have to do then is divide out from this side, whoops, divide out from this side the specific heat and the temperature, right, from both sides. And that would then allow us to find the mass of that copper. So the mass of copper would then equal the uh, heat gained by the copper divided then by the specific heat of the copper times the change in temperature of the copper. Okay, same thing we would do for then the mass of water, right? So the mass of water would be equal to then the heat gained or lost by that water, divided then by the specific heat of the water, multiplied by the change in temperature of the water. Okay, now remember the mass of the water is here, and it's the same thing as that, right? And the mass of the copper is here, and it's the same thing as that. So now I kind of combine the two. I notice that this is equivalent to this. Why? Well, because it says it right here, right? I mean, it says this is equivalent to this. And then the same thing for the mass of the water. So now what I realize is I can expand on the mass of the copper, and I can now turn this thing into, and let me move this over just a little bit, I can now turn this thing into the heat uh, energy gained or lost by the copper divided then by the specific heat of the copper, oops, Cu times the change in temperature of the copper, all divided now by the same thing for the water on the bottom, Q of the water, Q of H2O, then divided now by the specific heat of the water times the change in temperature of the water. Okay, I'm just going to move this down a little bit so it's not too, it's not too much in the way. All right. Now what we realize... Um, is, well, what we realize is this looks nuts, right? I mean, it's a fraction within a fraction within a fraction. I feel like I'm in inception right now. Uh, so what I want to do is try to, you know, maybe condense this fraction down a little bit. And anytime I have a fraction, you know, and a fraction within an overall fraction, I like to think about taking the numeric or the numerator fraction, excuse me, and multiplying it by the reciprocal of that denominator fraction. So that works out to now look like something like this. Q of the copper divided by then specific heat of the copper, multiplied by change in temperature of the copper, multiplied now by the reciprocal of this thing. So what's ever on the denominator down here comes up to the numerator, what's ever on the numerator comes down into the denominator. So now it's gonna be the specific heat of the water, multiplied by the change in temperature of the water, all then divided by uh, Q of the water. Okay, the heat gained or lost. Now, we have to go back to the problem and read it critically. All right, they said identical amounts of heat transfer. That means the Qs here are identical, right? 
And if they're identical and they are on opposite sides of a multiplication sign, that means that they will cancel. Not, you do not cross multiply here. You would only cross multiply if there, were an, there was an equal sign here. So these would cancel. And then it says into different masses of copper. So that's fine. The masses are different, no big deal. Um, causing identical, and there's no mass in this, so don't worry about that. Causing identical changes in temperature. So what do we notice also? That the temperatures changed were the same, right? So basically now, this leaves me with simply the specific heat of the water divided by the specific heat of copper, all right? So the specific heat of water divided then by the specific heat of copper. And remember, this is equal to, this is the same thing as the ratio of those masses, the mass of copper relative to the mass of water. And here it is, I mean, that's it. So all we gotta do is just plug in the specific heats and this comes right from the table, all right? So just make sure the units are the co consistent. So this is one, uh, 4,184 for water. I think copper is about 386 or 387, honestly. I don't remember exactly. I might be a little off here, um, you know, so if the answer is slightly off, it might be because this is. So just do me a favor, double check that. All right. And uh, let's just do it. 4184 over 387. We get about 10.8, right? So about 10.8. So this would be 10.8, 10.8 to 1. In other words, the mass of copper would need to be 10.8 or almost 11 times larger than the mass of water in order for them to have equal amounts of heat transfer causing identical changes in temperature. Why is that the case? That's because the specific heat of water is so great, right? You know, right? I mean, what, what cooking pots, really good cooking pots are made out of what? They're made out of copper. Why? Because they can conduct heat very easily, all right? They have a relatively low uh, specific heat, especially when compared to water. And then you might say, well, what's relatively low? I agree, it's subjective. Uh, but this would be the answer. All right, 10.8 to 1. So uh, assuming, by the way, that if this answer is right, you know what? I'm just going to peek. I'm going to peek. I'm going to do a little peek job over here. And 387, so I was right. Okay. Good. That's the answer. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.